automatically changed update settings based on subnet when an employee moves between branches. And now uh, I, I'll explain one of the technologies that we use to minimize the update bandwidth that's being used by EZ. So for that, in order to minimize that, we use uh, a, a technology called HTTP proxy, which will download the update and cache it for use. For an example, if we take the head office, so the head office server has a component called HTTP, EZ HTTP proxy, which will talk to EZ servers. And if there is a download available, uh, update available, it will be downloaded to EZ server and all the machines on head of his land will request the update from this uh, head of his server, not from the internet. So the update will be downloaded from the internet only once. So the head of his server will uh, distribute uh, the update to the uh, entire land network. So if we look at the architecture, this is the simplified version of it. Uh, most of the Sri Lankan organizations are having a single on-prem server. So in this on-prem server, we are having several EZ components installed uh, all together. However, uh, it's to this console that we connect uh, through our administrator's laptops. We are using the web browser to uh, connect to the server. All the machines and the servers are managed by EZ EM agent. EM stands for EZ management agent. So this agent talks to the server. This is how the communication goes up and down and server sends some instructions. It will get executed through the EM agent and EM agent keeps the server informed of everything that is being conducted. So let's try to see what's inside that uh, single server that we have, the EZ uh, Protect server. So inside the uh, EZ Protect server, uh, so there's a lot of information being collected. We have to have a database to uh, store this information. So it could be a, a, a Microsoft SQL server. Mostly uh, we, uh, we can get it done through an express edition of the SQL, or else we can install a MySQL database either of that will be sufficient. So uh, yet again, the server can be a Linux server or could be a Windows server. So if it is the Windows server, then uh, most probably you will be having MS SQL Express Edition. If it is the uh, virtual appliance, then uh, it comes with the MySQL database. So what else? So in order to uh, provide you a browser-based access, we are running an Apache HTTP service on the server. So apart from database services, we are running a web, web, uh, web service as well. So then uh, we are running a component called ESMC server to which the agents talk to. So that is the core of the uh, solution. So this is the part that communicates with uh, the agents. Then uh, when, he, when we have another branch or a different site, then uh, this Apache HTTP proxy comes into uh, act. So now we discussed about having a proxy server in the head office to uh, download the update, cache the update and distribute it to the uh, endpoint so that we our internet uh, bandwidth get utilized only once per update. Uh, if we try to do it with the same thing uh, for the branches, what will happen is if the branches are connected to a VPN, then uh, every time a client from branch uh, accesses the head of his server, then the VPN get utilized. So we have to prevent that as well. So to omit that, what we are doing is we are, we are only installing the ESET Apache HTTP proxy component, HTTP proxy component at the branch level. So the proxy component uh, does not require that much of resources, can be installed on a uh, VM or could be uh, 
uh, even on a desktop computer but uh, make sure it doesn't uh, get slowed down because all branch computers will depend on that particular proxy service to download the updates so what will happen now is the branch http proxy server when it wants the update it will talk to the head office http proxy server so if the head office server has already downloaded the update then that update will be uh, uh, sent to the branch http proxy server again similar to uh, the internet use case the vpn will be used only once all the branch pcs will be communicating to the branch proxy server so the update will be taken from the branch proxy server so no other uh, pc will talk directly to the head of his proxy server so in that way we can minimize the utilization of internet bandwidth vpn bandwidth uh, to one instance per update so that's how we uh, uh, make sure the bandwidth is uh, properly utilized so uh, these things i already uh, explained uh, having the apache http proxy in the head office right now uh, let's go back to the question let's imagine uh, it's the goal branch uh, office uh, let's say uh, our accountant is in goal branch so he has a ez machine uh, configured to access his uh, proxy server for an example let's say uh, the proxy server is are uh, with the ip address at goal branch 10.10.10.1 now uh, this week he is going to audit the candy branch so he will be located at candy branch this week uh, now if we use the same machine with the same configuration at the candy branch then there will be a problem why uh, now the candy branch is having a separate proxy Uh, with the uh, ip address of 10.10.20.1 but this guy is is at product is trying to reach goal branch proxy because he his machine is having that configuration so in order to avoid that we have to make sure when employees move from branch to branch they get the uh, uh, proxy settings so they get the proper policies implemented according to that branch uh, settings so how do we ensure that so the uh, so the uh, purpose of this exercise is to identify the subnet and based on that subnet that he is connected we will apply the policies so we are going to have a dynamic policy so dynamic uh, http proxy address so we have already run through an example where we identified the subnet now we know how to do it now it's only about uh, writing use cases let's uh, create two uh, dynamic groups uh, one for goal branch one for candy branch and uh, on those two branches we will use the given uh, given ip subnets and based on that we will create two policies for proxy settings to apply the correct proxy when uh, employees move from branch to branch let's try it uh, so what you have to do is number 1 create two dynamic groups goal branch and candy branch then uh, apply uh, the conditions so that you identify the subnet of each branch so you have to run two conditions for the two dynamic groups next thing is we will have to configure two different policies for the two branches so let's do that now i am going to create two branches but based on uh, based on dynamic groups so first branch is goal branch continue policy so how am i going to identify the branch subnet how am i going to identify the goal branch based on its subnet so i am adding the rule ip subnet should be equal to 
So that was pretty easy. Similar way, we can create a branch for uh, candy. New dynamic group, candy branch. Continue. New template is candy branch template. Continue. Condition is similar. IP subnet. <laughs> should be 10.10.20.0 so previously it was for uh, for gold branch it was 10.10.10.0 for candy branch it's 10.10.20.0 10 uh, okay finish finish now we have the two branches set up now it's about getting the proxy configuration done how do you configure the proxy configuration so this is done through policies let me go to policies then uh, i am choosing uh, a set endpoint for windows actions new new policy this is uh, proxy config for gold branch right settings if you go to so this is where uh, the first thing that you have to notice when you are uh, configuring a policy you have to choose the platform whether it's for an endpoint, for the, for a mobile device, for a server that you are going to configure the setting, then you have to choose what the OS is. So I'm going to configure uh, policies for my accountant. So he is running a, a Windows laptop. So I'm choosing either endpoint for Windows. Now under that, where do I get the proxy setting? It's typically under tools, proxy server. Now, uh, uh, by default, it's deactivated. So what I have to do is use proxy server should be enabled. Then proxy server address has to be mentioned. So in my case, 10.10.1. So this is going to be my goal branches proxy server. Uh, port, if you do not change the port uh, during the installation, port will be 3128. Uh, so that's all so i'm going to uh, continue so to which machines do i want to assign this policy so assign assigning should be to only gold branch machines which is the dynamic group so only that dynamic group should uh, have that configuration So we configured proxy for uh, proxy that policy for gold branch. Now I'm going to configure a similar policy for the candy branch. So now you know how to do it. Uh, candy branch proxy config settings. We have to go to tools proxy server. Now the address is different. Address should be 10.10.20.1. Right, that's all you have to do. Continue. Now, when we are assigning, make sure that we assign it to the right branch. Candy branch. Okay. Summary finish. We have uh, created two dynamic groups based on the uh, subnet they are on. Then we have assigned two proxy configurations. So the proxy configurations will be effect will be in effect the moment they connect to the particular subnet. 
most of you might be having this issue in your organization because uh, you have to create separate uh, installers because of this proxy issue for an example for the head office since it is in a separate subnet you have to create uh, installers for head office separate installers for goal candy likewise you have to create separate installers but in uh, this manner what we are doing is we are assigning policies based on the subnet they are in so i think this method will be much convenient and you will be able to conduct the installations using a single uh, single set of installation files rather than changing the uh, uh, ip addresses uh, and uh, creating multiple uh, hundreds of installation files so uh, if you use it uh, wisely this can be uh, used for the uh, subnet but uh, yet again if you have complex setups for an example if you have multiple ip uh, subnets per branch then uh, still if you know the uh, two or three subnets that you have in that branch yet again uh, the dynamic group can be modified the template can be modified to include one of those ip addresses how do how you do that is go to dynamic group uh edit let's say the expression now now we are seeking only for this subnet but we can keep on adding uh, some other subnets as well but then you will have to change the operator to o that means at least one condition will be true so it will be one subnet out of the listed subnets uh, 